young man, I carried my pack And I lived the free life of a rover From the Murray's Green Basin to the dusty outback I waltzed my Matilda all over Then in 1915, my country said, son, it's time to stop rambling, cause there's work to be done. So they gave me a tin hat and they gave me a gun and they sent me away to the war. And the band played waltzing Matilda As we sailed away from the Kai And amidst all the tears And the shouts and the cheers We sailed off for Gallipoli Mornington Secondary College is very much the school of the Mornington community and we take it very seriously, our namesake and what we can do for our community. We have strong connections with Rotary, uh, we have strong connections with the Lions Club and uh, with charitable organisations such as Love Your Sister, World Vision and uh, many other uh, opportunities that we can have in regards to supporting what occurs in our community. One of our strongest uh, relationships is with the Victoria Police where we have a, a police program that operates through the school and has been very much supported by the Victoria Police for a number of years now. We get a better relationship with the local youth in this situation here and that's very, very important because they learn about police, that they're human beings, uh, that we do other things besides running around catching people for speeding or going down to Coles and picking them up for shoplifting. So they see another side of us, and in my situation, I'm able to teach them uh, drumming with, with Paul. Well, the drum corps started uh, in 2007 uh, when we introduced the, um, the Victoria Police Police Corps program to Mornington Secondary College. It was early in the piece where we decided to get the troops marching as part of the uh, requirements for the graduation. Paul Peterson and I uh, were talking uh, along with uh, Mick Mears uh, as part of the, the uh, Police Youth Drum Corps and it was probably in, in the one voice where we said, why don't we march? We weren't doing too well with them and they, tend, they tended to be a little bit lax with it. So I said to uh, Senior Constable Mick Mears, I said, I've got, a, I've got a drum in the car. I think that might help us. So uh, I went and got it and I got up behind the troops. They didn't even know that I had the drum. And I just went up behind them and I just started to, uh, to tap out the rhythm and uh, it sharpened them up straight away. The strength of our police program is how well it promotes how youth and police can get on so well in today's society, which is not often uh, shown um, publicly. The school benefits, Victoria Police benefits and the community benefits because we're always out there doing jobs for the community. The Monday before Anzac Day, we, uh, we took the kids to the shrine. And this is all part of the lead up to uh, Anzac Day um, and part of the education process that we, uh, we instill in the kids. I'm Cody Ben-Smith. I'm a tenor player in the drum corps and I've been with the drum corps since 2011. My name is Emily Catt and I'm the lead tenor player in the drum corps. I think it's important for young people to value their history. Just before Anzac Day, we went to the shrine and we had a tour of the shrine. All right, you will be asked to um, participate in the education program here, those of you who haven't done it. And I know the senior kids have done it many times. All right, and those, of course, those of you who came to Gallipoli last year. We had a tour of the shrine by this Guy and he was really enthusiastic. He was a really great guy and he had a lot of good stories to tell. Um, I'm an ex-serviceman myself. Um, I'm going to be looking after you for about an hour and a half. I'm going to show you around. Uh, there's some particular spots 
at the shrine and I'm going to tell you some stories. Is that cool? That's Any nice. questions? Industrial war. This is a war, uh, a war where you can get hit by a high velocity rifle round or a machine gun round. Each one of those bullets coming out of a machine gun travels at 820 metres per second. If you're hit by something like that, something's going to come off. If we join the army, they're going to send us overseas and we're going to see the pyramids, maybe go to Paris, we, we get, might go to London. Does this sound attractive to you? What if we lost? You know, they're reading in the papers that the Germans are doing real bad stuff in Belgium. You know, they're killing people, burning buildings down. So young men might have gone overseas to stop that coming here. Anzac Day is important to me because I feel I have the opportunity to represent my great-grandfather. He was the recipient of 13 medals, including the Coup de Gras, which is the French equivalency to the Victorian Cross. Gallipoli for me was absolutely amazing. Being able to stand where my great-grandfather once fought was just breathtaking. Words can't describe how, like, how I was feeling, what was running through my body. It was perfect. Please remain standing for the national anthems of Turkey, New Zealand and Australia. In 2012, we took the kids to Gallipoli. And it was a great honour for us to be able to take them there. That was where the Anzac spirit was born. The ceremony was absolutely amazing. I'd never been, and neither had any of the kids that came along. We had no preconceived ideas of what it was like. It, it was absolutely amazing to see what the Anzacs actually were confronted with. The beaches, the landing, the cliffs. It actually brought home to me, and I think to all of us, just how impossible their mission was. They had no chance of winning. I think by being there, you appreciate the difficulties and the adversity that they had to endure. The kids' reactions were ranged from absolute amazement to bewilderment, really. They were asking more and more questions um, and wanted to delve deeper and deeper into the history of it and um, they wanted to understand more and more about who these people were, who these soldiers were, why were these decisions made. I think they, they really did understand um, how senseless war is. The lead up to Anzac Day this year was very, very intense. We just got off the Easter break and um, we knew we'd only had a week to get the kids ready. We got the kids to practice, I think, probably at least twice a day. The day before Anzac Day, the school had a community event in which um, all community members are invited, including uh, members of the RSL, local Rotary members, and any other dignitaries that may want to attend on the day. It's a very important event, the school Anzac ceremony. It's important for the kids within the school and within the drum corps and within the police corps. They're parading themselves um, in front of their peers. All of the school is, uh, is required to be at that ceremony. And it's a very important ceremony in terms of the Anzac meaning and the importance of, of Anzac Day. Just over one year ago, a group of 10 students, including ourselves. It's a special event because the students of the school actually run it. It promotes their, their leadership abilities and um, gives them an opportunity to link with the meaning of Anzac Day and the Anzac spirit. We will endeavour to obtain a seedling from the original Lone Pine tree and together with this plaque, find an appropriate spot for, for them here on the grounds.
They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we shall remember them, lest we forget. We have a strong connection with our veteran community. We invite uh, at the veteran community to come and be a part of our Anzac Day and Remembrance Day services, which are completely run by our students from start to finish. And it shows to these veterans what a strong association and respect these students have for our veterans. David Brown continues our regular look at life in Victoria's state schools. This time he's been marching to his own beat at Mornington. This is the Mornington Secondary College Police Youth Corps, one of just seven in Victoria. We would be easily the biggest and we'd be the most successful. Yeah, over the years there's been many highlights in the drum corps. The, the one that comes, comes to mind is, is when we, we were successful with the NAB Impact uh, Schools First Award. We were, we were awarded uh, $50,000. I think we were the only school in this region to have got it. Melbourne Rebels Rugby Union approached us and wanted us to do their opening ceremony. They are actually, in fact, the, the first Melbourne team to be international in an international uh, competition. So we were greatly honoured by that. They wanted us to have at least 80 participants. That was 40 flag bearers along with 40 drummers. We, we did that with ease. Uh, since 2009, when I started the Drum Corps, I've done many things I couldn't have done. Some of them that really highlighted to me would be the Shrine of Remembrance in the city, Police Air Wing, Police Dog Squad, Search and Rescue. We get to go a lot of places that normal people wouldn't who aren't in the Drum Corps or Youth Corps. We get to go anywhere, really. We've gone, we march in Moomba. It is an exciting day right around Australia. Uh, one of the most exciting places, of course, is Melbourne. Uh, and Reuben is there at the moment experiencing all the thrill and the fun of the fair, Reuben. <laughs> That's right, it is Moomba today. The parade kicks off in a couple of hours. These guys are taking part in it. The Mornington Secondary College Victorian Police Drum Corps. And uh, John, you're uh, well, one of the big boys in charge here. Drumming, how long have you been doing it for? Uh, three years now. And is it something which is pretty easy to, to take up and get involved in? Yeah, it's actually quite easy and it's one of the best things about it. It's quite easy to do and it's really fun. Right, Would you yeah. like to have a shot? Before I joined Drum Corps, I wasn't 100% sure what I wanted to do with my life after school. I wasn't sure if I wanted to join the Australian Defence Force, the Victoria Police, um, retail, I wasn't really sure. Since I joined the Drum Corps, it's really cemented in my mind what I wanted to do. I've always wanted to be in a position to help others, just like our original Anzacs did, did throughout every single war they've been through since World War I, World War II, Vietnam, everywhere. Anzac Day is by far the biggest event for the school. The preparations are exhausting. We have the school Anzac ceremony, which is done on the 24th of April, and we have the Anzac ceremony, the community event up Main Street, Mornington. On the day itself, Anzac Day, I was in particularly very nervous. We've got to present the drum corps and present the kids, not only to the parents, the uh, Chief Inspector, Principal Burns, and in particular, we want to appease to the veterans. So to us, that's the biggest test of all.
we prepare, rigorously prepare ourselves for that day. And that's why I was so nervous. When it comes to going on parade, you're very aware of the community that is there. And of course, we've got very high standards that we want to hold and project to the community. On Anzac Day, um, I was a bit anxious about our performance because the Commissioner was inspecting us and then we marched up the street to the Memorial Park. This year, again for Anzac Day, we joined the Mornington community in the march up the main street of Mornington, where we invite our student leaders and members of the school community to be a part of that. I was incredibly proud to have over 200 students attend that day. They looked fantastic, they walked or marched with pride, they performed in the drum corps with pride and it was just an incredible sight to see the students passionately getting involved in the Anzac Day Parade. My job as coordinator is to make sure that the drum corps peaks on Anzac Day. And I'm thrilled that we achieved that this year. I think the main importance of it is that um, we do justice to, to Anzac. To the relatives of the ex-servicemen and women who paid the supreme sacrifice, I sincerely hope that the group assembled here today will truly show that their sacrifice has not been forgotten, nor will it be forgotten, and for everyone else, welcome. We are being supported by the Police Drum Corps, which participates in the march year after year. Formed by students from Mornington Secondary College. We'd been waiting all day. We'd here. marched up together as a group and it was just before we were about to come on and Jack Green comes up and what a tough act to follow. The poppies are the symbol of the love they shed for us. The many unsung heroes who gave their lives for love. The love that grew around them from birth to adult state. Mother love, then sweetheart, love of country, life and living. They had no time to hate. They learned to hate. As weary they learned to fight and fly. To march through burning desert sands and sail neath Arctic sky. Red of eye and sickened by wartime's deathly smell and still they kept on giving as one more comrade fell. Looking at the news today, I wonder sometimes why. Why did my generation have only time to die? I look again and then I see the other young, again unsung, who go about their work and play enjoying still their native way. They walk in freedom on the downs and come and go to any town. So all in all, I still maintain 
My friends, you did not die in vain. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It wasn't until virtually the end of the performance, uh, completely, and people were getting ready to go, that I encountered the young children from the college. And I was absolutely amazed that the young children, boys and girls, that came up to me and thanked me sincerely and said, oh, how wonderful. And they really, honestly, they, they I could never wear a hat again. <laughs> I now call upon Gundell Gibson and Megan Burns from Mornington Secondary College to read the Requiem. On Anzac Day, Megan and I were asked to read the Requiem. Um, when I was asked this, I felt huge responsibility and but also I was so proud to have been asked that. It's amazing to think that we're almost 100 years on from when the Anzacs first left. And I hope to think that in 100 years more that we'll still be thinking about the Anzacs. On this day, above all days, we recall those who served in war and who did not return to receive the thanks of a grateful nation. Remember those who still sleep where they left, amid the holy scrub, in the valleys and on the ridges of Gallipoli, on the rocky and terraced hills of Palestine and in the lovely cemeteries of France. We remember those who lie asleep in the ground beneath the shimmering haze of the Libyan desert at Badia, Derna, Tobruk and amid the mountain passes and olive groves of Greece and Crete and the rugged snow-capped hills of Lebanon and Syria. We remember those who lie buried in the rank jungle of Malaya and Burma, in New Guinea and in the distant isles of the Pacific. When it was my turn to speak, of course I was nervous and I was thinking, am I going to forget something? Is it going to be a big disaster? But I knew that I was there for a reason and I needed to show my respect. We remember those who lie buried amid loving friends in the British Isles and in our own far north. We remember those who lie in unknown resting places in almost every land. And those gallant men whose grave is the unending sea. Especially do we remember those who died as prisoners of war, remote from their homeland and from the comforting presence of their kith and kin. We think of those of our women's services who gave their lives in our own and foreign lands and at sea, and of those who proved to be, in much more than name, the sisters of our fighting men. We recall too the staunch friends who fought beside our men in the first Anzac Day, men of New Zealand who helped create the name of Anzac. May these all rest proudly in the knowledge of their achievements and may we and our successors in that heritage prove worthy of their sacrifice. Thank you very much, uh, Kendall and Megan. It was a wonderful day. It really was a very important day. I get a bit emotional about things like this because um, I've been in as a bandsman in the Anzac Day for 32 years and this is our eighth year uh, as a member of the Police Youth Corps Drum Corps from Mornington Secondary College and the kids get a great benefit from it. They learn about Australia's history in military conflict around the world. They get a better understanding of what it was like to be involved in a war which is terrible at any time. I think principals sometimes get caught up in the data that drives uh, the media in regards to it's the VCE scores, it's the destination data, it's all of the um, measurable things that, that value scores. That is just one very small part of it. It's about what our students believe or what our young people believe their connection is to their community and what skills and what values that they pick up which then will make them better people in this world. And certainly when you see what the students get out of being part of things like the drug 
drum corps or recognised by their local community for supporting their local community, they just grow through the roof. When they march up the main street of Mornington on Anzac Day, you can see their chests puff out the further they walk up the the main street and the pride when they see their community members clapping and cheering them because they are doing what they are doing. And you cannot measure that, not in any shape or form, but that is something that they will take with them for the rest of their lives. They'll leave the school as a citizen, uh, embracing the national character and providing that for their children uh, in the future. And I think that, that creates a, a stronger country. For children of that young age, and what are they, 12, 14, 16, I think the fact that it's registered with them, that Anzac Day is important. And what pleases me more than anything else is they're Australian and they haven't let Anzac Day pass by them. Not by any way, and they don't intend to and they intend to keep at it all the time, and I say congratulations to them. It's good that they've got something to be proud of, and they have. Every Anzac Day has much more meaning now since I've been to Gallipoli. Being able to be a part of something so big, in not only in Australia, but other countries, is very important. Uh, I feel the need to contribute my part, like my grandfather contributed his, in honouring those that have fallen. Anzac Day, is not the glorification of war. In fact, it's the opposite. It's about mateship, it's about honour, it's about respect, and it's about courage in the face of adversity. And I hope that these are the values that our students will take with them onto their life's journey. So